Well, in the, the suburbs of like uh, Nuremberg, it was there were some houses like uh, family home houses, and uh, they were uh, you could uh, we'd set up around around the houses, and uh, we several people would be assigned to attack to the attack the houses, and we the rest some of the others of the unit would be keeping watch on the, all the windows and all that sort of thing. And if there's any enemy at the windows, then we'd, we'd give the fire on fire on that. Did that ever happen? Did the Germans ever come through the window? No, but they could see them moving a little bit. And so we could try and, and uh, keep them busy too, you know. Especially and then when we get into Nuremberg, there was high-rise buildings, three, four, five-story buildings, tenement-type things, and those were a little different because they, uh, you had to clean out the buildings, you know, and so it was, wasn't just one room; it was a floor, you know, a whole level, and it was pretty awkward trying to get in there you have to as a team you work your ways through the buildings through the rooms be sure there's nobody in there that was occupied uh, by the enemy you know so in the buildings that you went into did you ever find Germans in any of the rooms we had yeah with several of them we, we did yes would they give up or would they fight back well they were most of them would would fight if unless you got into them and they they were no place to go but surrender and then they would surrender. Yeah, they were uh, they create a lot of hassle with uh, out in the usually in the buildings the high rises they were kind of get good views from the upper stories and and they, people coming to walk we we're kind of moving down the streets and and. Uh, they, uh, you, you, you had to be careful of where the firing was coming from, and uh, it was just pretty cautious. Yes, you had to be careful, and uh, and then if we'd we'd get down to a certain area, then if we were still there, then we'd we'd get a, a group of guys and we'd try and occupy the floor by floor until we got to the the top. Was, could have been a three or four story building or once in a while there was one was more but uh, you had to go through every room and be sure and just careful of the booby traps so Mr. Schneiden what is that like when you're in a building and you're going around a corner not knowing if there's a German waiting for you with a rifle how do you even prepare for that well you, 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 they were they were being cautious too, you know. They weren't that dumb as just stand out in the open, and they uh, you just had to be very careful, especially if you get into a place with several doors in the in the room or in the hallway. And sometimes you'd find it was locked; you couldn't just push it open. And other times you'd shoot out the lock and go in and find out if it's empty in there. And several times, uh, several. Uh, the rooms were still occupied by civilians and not just the military, you know, but... And what was their reaction like when this American GI comes oh, in guns were, blazing? I think most of them were thrilled to death that we weren't shooting them, that they didn't get shot. And, uh, but by, by then, at that time of the war, I think most of the buildings were occupied by the military or or not at all, you know. So if we were getting uh, fired on from any building, we'd get a bunch of us to uh, attack that building and f be sure that we, people would go around the, the side and check the, the basement or whatever level that they had buildings at doors or whatever throw grenades in and just do what you have to do to be sure there's maybe they're cleared out or sometimes we'd capture them and other times they were we'd kill them you know they were there or wound them and they 
they were, it, it was a nervous time, I must say, because you never knew who was behind the door, you know.